issues. Welcome back to Discrete Defense Ranch. What we got going on today is a basic chronograph test of the Kimber K6S DASA chambered in 357 Magnum. We will be shooting 357 Magnum exclusively today. We're going to start out with some basic 158 grain semi jacketed soft point by Aguila. Then we're going to move up to the Underwood 180 grain lead flat nose. And then we'll bump up to the Buffalo Boar Outdoorsman. Again, 180 grain lead flat nose. Which I'm not looking forward to. But I just uh, at least want to get three rounds of each over the chronograph. Kind of to compare with the uh, the results from the 20-inch uh, the barrel of the Rossi 92. And if I sound extra nervous today... It's because I am terrified. All right, have the chronograph. We've got a, a sack of dirt taking the place of a sandbag. And we're gonna put the camera down where you can see the chronograph face. And the distances work out to about 25 feet from the target and about five feet to the pro chrono from the muzzle of the gun. And I'll start out with six rounds of the 158 grain Aguilas. Just don't want to damage any of my equipment. And it is starting to rain, so I better get underway. <coughs> oh yeah, here's a uh, 1048 for those 158 grain Aguilas. Not too bad. <coughs> there. 1,075. 1,087. You know, with those Aguilas, I'm getting quite a bit of spray, so I'm glad I have glass. Not sure where that one went. 1,051. I'll switch to double action. That 1139, felt that one. <coughs> Good grief. 1083. And I guess that's six. Kind of lost count. <laughs> As Dirty Harry says, all right, let's review that. We had a high of 1139. A low of 1,048, six shot average of 1080 feet per second for the 158 grain Aguilas, semi-jacketed soft point. Those should be an interesting gel test when we get around to it, but it is starting to rain. Again, the two inch barrel of the Kimber Dasa, the Kimber K6S Dasa. Let's go have a look at how I did on the target back over here. Now, I went single action mode at first. So this over here is my first shot. And you can see that it's a little off. This is actually, well, one of these two was my second. Don't really remember. But after that, uh, yeah, I went double action. And... Uh, all sorts of interestingness. This, by the way, for those of you who are a little squeamish about trees getting hurt, this is a big dead elm right here. Nothing to worry about there. And uh, the cows this afternoon are all over in that direction. Now, it is starting to sprinkle, but I don't think it's going to rain very long. I'm just gonna get my sensitive equipment out of the way and maybe we'll go have a look at the cows briefly before we shoot the big heavy stuff. Hopefully before I chicken out and decide not to shoot them at all. All right, here's the, uh, here's the discreet defense clover field. A little bit of tree foil in there, building the soil nicely. And right out there by the lone oak, are the discrete defense cattle to 
the left there you can see the neighbor on the next section to the north and then a little to the left of the lone oak you can just see manitoba canada no <laughs> not really it's about it's about 40 miles in that direction it does seem like the sun is going to come back out so i'm going to set up and shoot those full house magnums and say goodbye to my hands okay so now that rain shower has passed we're gonna throw in three of these nasty underwood lead flat nose see how they do from a two inch barrel we've tested them from the rossi 92 and i believe i said that these would be the most powerful round that i would ever consider shooting from a handgun or at least from a small one like this. I'm not going to pretend that I'm not scared, but while I have the buffalo boar waiting in the wings, I can't be that scared because at least out of the 20 inch barrel, the buffalo boar were definitely a bit hotter round than these. Now they're 180 grain lead flat nose. List velocity is 1400 feet per second, but I'm sure that's out of a much longer barrel and again five feet away i think i'm gonna do double action with these just to make sure i don't squeeze off a shot before i'm all the way ready that is not so horrible 1060 1,081. 1,042. Wow. That, that was unexpectedly tame. I didn't find that to be substantially worse than the Aguilas. Probably I, I, probably I was just expecting it to be way worse than it was. And then it wasn't. All right, next up will be the Buffalo Boar Heavy Heavy 357 Magnum Outdoorsman. 180 grain hard cast lead flat nose. These, uh, these also have a list velocity of 1,400. These get up around 1,900 feet per second from the 20 inch barrel. Let's just grab three of these, drop them into the Kimber, and hopefully I do not explode either my timber or myself. All right, there they are, evil monsters. Whew. Five feet back. <laughs> yeah. 1215, yeah, you could tell those were a lot hotter. And, uh, the uh, doesn't the Kimber does not want to cycle those. Oh, there they rotate. Oh, good grief! Eleven eighty-seven. Eleven twenty-eight. I'm not. I'm not sure that I should count that last one. I, uh, I may have gone slightly sideways to the chronograph. We'll just take that median of 1187 and call it good. I'm, I'm comfortable not doing that ever again. All right, let's see what's going on here. Oh, this is interesting, is it not? None of those are sticking at all. I think what I witnessed just now is what Gun Sam has run into when he only put three rounds into a revolver like this. It's a little heavy on this side. And I did um, double check this. I did notice that when I was, you know, squeezing the trigger that the cylinder rocked backward. 
So that was the snick you probably heard because it's, it's heavy on that right side when you've got three rounds in there. Probably makes a difference to have the 180 grain projectile and to have not even brass on the left side, you know, when it's rotating. I'm not excited about that. But at least I know what's going on now. So once again, that was our ridiculous, heavy, hard cast, 180 grain lead flat nose test of the Kimber K6S DASA. I'm glad that's over with and I don't have to shoot those things anymore. All right. Thanks, folks. This is Dave for Discrete Defense Research. Have another great week. No issues.